guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming, Sydney Mounts, one of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tian Hui Hui. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> Ming Jing pulled a telescope from his robes and handed it to me. Another half an hour, I'd say. You see that with your telescope? Those closely knitted buildings in the distance? That's the harbor. I looked, at the pa I looked at the place he was pointing towards, where the uneven shadows of various buildings began appearing clearer within the lens. With a few twists of the adjusting knobs, the black horizons began lengthening and shaped a shadow that emblazoned the horizon. Wow, we're almost there then! Allow me to deduce you. That there is the biggest seaside trading port in the Xi King of the Xi Kingdom, Zhizhou. Then we're in territory of Xi. Does that mean the ships over there are... Yep, the merchant ships entering in Zhizhou, with an abundance of trades and goodies. No security's visible, though. You don't have pirates in this region? Any territorial waters here are under the protection of Zhizhou. If any pirate dares to come and assault the ships, they would be left in wreckages. I see, but speaking of entering, I will need to settle the immigration procedure soon. What will you do once we dock, Mingjing? Let me see. After arriving on shore, my friends at the Archaeological Institute will come and pick me up. So, once we arrive, maybe the time to say goodbye. Now you mention it, it does feel too quick and quite upsetting, you know. Don't say those sad words, Tex. I don't want to say goodbye to you either. If possible, I would love for you to help me in writing the archaeological essay this time. You're trying to coerce me into solving your troubles for you, aren't you? Heh, <laughs> just joking, buddy. Still, you said you never came to G Kingdom before, right? If this is the first time, then there must be many things you're unfamiliar with, right? Yep, but the very least I know some of the basic things here, though. Excellent! Professor Ming's class begins then. My people Tex, is there any my people Tex, is there anything you would ask of me? Anything is possible, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Ming Jing suddenly smiled and smirked, acting like a teacher, though that jubilant smile made him quite unprofessional. I must admit, there was quite an air of authority to him. Quite like a lecturer. Please, I took on the revision class before coming over. I know the basic facts here, you all have you know. Hmm, and that is where you people make the same mistakes over. Reliance on texts and books cannot help you keep up with the present. When entering a new place, not only is common knowledge a necessity, but also a place's present happenings and news as well. Which is something you are not familiar with, right? Don't be shy. Ask me anything. Good students are those who are curious and ask questions, after all. The fox, with his hands on his hips and twitching ears, smiled at me with an adorable expression, as if he couldn't wait to share his lesson with me, mixed with brimming confident, with brimming confident, brimming confidence and bravado. Even though I prepared a lot of revision before coming to Xi, the knowledge provided on the books are just basic geopolitical knowledges, which meant any other aspects would be best known from locals. If you say so, then I'll take it. Really? Anything? I mean, really anything? Are you doubting me? Helping people to helping people at the end, like helping Buddha to the West, is part of our culture, after all. You know I can't help you anymore once we reach shores. It would be all up to you. There you go. If you say so, let's hear what the Z Kingdom is like is like to you through your perspective and see if there's any differences from what you mentioned compared to written materials then. I leaned on the railing, feeling the sea breeze upon my face, and listened attentively to Ming Jing's class of Xi knowledge and stories. Let me think where to start. Oh, something basic then. Beautiful art. Uh, firstly, Xi's geographical position on the map is, lo is located on the east of the world map which is why many countries like to, like to refer Xi Kingdom as the country of the East or the land of the East. Our central city, which is also known as the capital of the Xi Kingdom, is called Wang City, sometimes well known in texts. But I will add a note here. We locals prefer to call it the Royal Capital. The Royal Capital is such an important place that it must be home to many important people, right? If you want to know the most important individual in this country, then look no further than the Royal Palace, the home to the current emperor, the Holy Son of the Heavens, Xingxiang Qianzi. Because our system is one of monarchy, united under the same Emperor Tan united under the name of Emperor Tianzi, all orders would be decided from the two assistant ministers of the central ministry, before being delivered and carried out by each minister of each region. Catching on to this so far? Uh, currently matches what I have read about the book on the book so far, then. His Majesty Tianzi must be the greatest and most important person here, yes? Uh, panic not, here is something that the texts have not recorded. While the two assistant ministers of the former emperor are extremely loyal to both the emperor and the Xi kingdom, they are at odds and differ greatly in the approach of the country ruling. 
With the assistant minister as the respective leaders, they would split the country's regional ruling among them, amongst themselves, allocating regions under their control. The two parties, known as King Factions and Mo Factions, remained in conflict for almost 20 years. When our last emperor passed away and our current Tianzi rose to power, the parties would reunite as one, ending the 20 years' worth of internal struggle. With such, we continued the subject with talks about His Majesty himself. Suddenly, the conversation stopped. Ming Jing grimaced and pursed his, ma pursed his mouth. With a twitching mouth, he looked at me with an awkward smile while I looked at him confused. Sorry, maybe it's for the best, not to delve into this any further. Huh. Halfway and stopped. It kind of feeding upon my appetite. Is there something not easy, easily said after all? But we were so close to the finish, there shouldn't be any problems in, fin in finishing it. Just tell me, please. You've mentioned so much already. What's the problem with a little more than usual? It's not because I'm not willing to tell you, Tex. There are some things that are best not to be spoken of in a public area. And secondly, it's quite difficult to explain them to you, an outsider. Uh, too many words spoken can be an invitation for trouble. Just forget what I said and ask me, for, ask me if there's no further, okay? here this is the stuff okay he quickly looked around and once certain that there was no one else on the gallery with him quickly whispered in my ear sorry about that it's just that i remembered after spending overseas for so long that there are things that are quite awkward to speak about but this country's emperor and morose king and pope are quite different by nature for us commoners it has too much elements within that explaining it would be difficult so please don't delve into this any further and when you go into the Xi kingdom don't ask people of this okay it would be troublesome if you were if you were overheard talking about this. Quickly, the fox adjusted his expression to return to normal, with a slight smirk around his mouth now. Now then, let us resume with other matters then, student Tex. It seems the matter is quite the delicate matter, involving internal matters. <laughs> okay, matter three times. Let's hold my horse for horses for here now. After all, it would only be more trouble if I was dragged into this mess. With that thought in mind, I nodded and apologized to Ming Jing. I understand. If it's not an easy topic to talk about, there's no need to force yourself to speak of it then. No worry. Well then, is there anything else you're interested in to, to ask about? Uh, boring politics aren't interesting, and no need to further pursue about it, right? Mr. Ming, how about some local livelihood interests then? Livelihood, eh? Well, some are similar to Moreau, your homeland of course, though there are things that are quite different, like food and customs. Speaking of which... Your main purpose here is traveling, then tasting the variety of food culture in every region is a must is a must part of your journey. Food represents a part of a country's culture, after all. I already listed down the 100 types of food I wanted to try and see be already before I left. Hmm. And that is why you're still quite naive, Tex. Eating is one problem. How you eat is another problem. You know that? When you were in the city of Z, it is a necessity to keep an eye out, and as every year here are as every year here are overseas victims to overcosted expenses, enough to wrap around the equator for one full cycle. Isn't that a little overdramatic? If one lacks the basic knowledge of a region, it would be easy to fall into the trap of cunning merchants, for their honeyed words would try and rob you of any resemblance of logic and allow those thoughts and desires to become the blade to pierce your wallets. Can you be a little straightforward here? Why the twists and turns? Simple. If a hotel or restaurant sees you as an overseas tourist, they would recommend you all kinds of expensive dishes use all kinds of words and trickery to tempt you into purchasing them. Not only the fancy restaurants, even a stall would raise their prices on purpose when treating you to their specials, using those tricks of the words to lure you into purchasing worthless junk worth the cost of just a few bronze pennies. Oi, oi, are you making me feel quite scared and nervous here? I believe that's what they call the Overseas Special Pricing Limited Edition, eh? The heck is a limited edition? Ain't this going a little too far? I'm not getting any happier with this in my life. Eating or souvenir purchasing, you should be you should be careful around them, for they might be concealing traps within their words that you don't even manage to notice. After all, though I am certain you wouldn't fall for their trap, considering how smart you are. I'm feeling tired mentally. Just keep an eye out, okay? Customs differs with different regions. 
Oh, yes, I remembered something important. Very important. Suddenly, Ming Jing looked as if he remembered something and slapped his fist in his open palm. What? What is it? Why the sudden... Those devils of the demon tribe! The demon tribe? What about them? This happened many years ago, when my country was still in constant conflict with the demon tribe of our frontier. A conflict that lasted many years until His Majesty, Emperor Tiaxi... Emperor Tiaxi's rose to pat rise to power. Upon taking the throne, Emperor Tiaxi was able to broker peace talks with the demon tribe and ended the endless war. I spent decades in maintaining peace between the two civilizations, beast kind and demons. And just seven years ago, Emperor Tiaxi was able to sign a peace treaty with the demon tribe, and with the aim to learn from one another, allow the demon kind to be integrated into our livelihood. And this is known by many as the Pro-Demon Accord. Which meant that the Accord allowed the demon kind that lived in the frontier to coexist and be integrated into the society with the aim to better, li better the lives for those in Z and the frontier to live in better prosperity ever after. Isn't that supposed to be a good thing? On the surface, yes, but the demon kind are an extremely dangerous civilization. A coincidence, coincidence or not, when the Pro-Demon Accord was announced, the Emperor Tiaxi contracted a deadly disease that not even the Empire's greatest and most experienced doctor was able to cure and fix. The former Emperor passed away, the disease being the cause, and taking his throne as His Majesty Emperor Tianzi. And problems arose ever since then. After the death of the Emperor Tiaxi, voices, voices of resistance began speaking out against the Accord, and the internal affairs of the Empire became divided over the legitimacy and application of the Accord. Yet, with the integration of the demon kind in our society so deeply rooted, any forceful reaction would only cause more death and destruction. For now, both sides are within a period of brittle peace. For me, while I know little of demon kind, I would still keep an eye out for any non-beast kind. Better safe than sorry. Hey, that's racism. Hmm. Uh, Tex, are you okay? Ah, sorry, just a little distracted. No problem, the one to apologize should have been me. Just me taking all these time. Uh, how about you share with me what your pers perspective perspectives are about the demon kind? Uh, my perspective on demon kind. Uh, believe it or not, when I was begging on my knees during my hardest time in my life, I met some demon kind and been given help by their hands. Alright, y'all actually have to get ready for work. I'm going to go ahead and cut it a little bit short right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!